institutions are taking over crypto, and it's happening right under our noses. Wait, are you serious? That's right. Big banks are investing in crypto companies, leveraging crypto technology, and making increasingly bullish price predictions. On top of that, we have central banks who might be forced to disclose their crypto assets to institutional regulators. My name is Jessica, and in this video, we're going to examine why the banks have changed their tune on crypto, which institutions are leading the charge, and what it could mean for the market. There's a lot to cover, so let's get straight into it. To fully understand how far the banks and other financial institutions have come on crypto, let's go back to 2014. Back then, Wall Street bankers were terrified of crypto, as were most regulators. They felt it threatened the financial system and their wallets, and they weren't wrong. Indeed, Bitcoin was a response to the massive failings of the banking sector, failings that resulted in the devastating crash of 2008. It was a rejection of a paradigm where institutions were considered too big to fail. This meant they would happily take risks with customer deposits, believing that the government would bail them out if things went wrong. Bitcoin at that time was powered by libertarian idealists who craved a better world and did something about it. On Wall Street, the response was dismissive. And one voice stood out among the many TradFi figures denouncing Bitcoin and crypto. That voice belonged to Jamie Dimon, the head of JP Morgan and one of the titans of banking. Jamie and others sought to sow doubt into the minds of regulators about the merits of crypto. In 2014, he used his platform at the World Economic Forum in Davos to undermine crypto and link it to illicit finance. Unfortunately for Jamie and the other bankers hoping for crypto's demise, regulators in the US gave crypto companies licenses to operate. And although some regulators, particularly in the US, keep trying to put the brakes on the industry, crypto has continued to thrive. Meanwhile, Jamie has continued to criticize crypto as an asset class. In multiple news appearances in recent years, he has smugly called it everything from worthless to a hyped up fraud. In one particular telling interview on CNBC, he thought he found his got your moment, asking one of the hosts how he knew Bitcoin is going to stop at 21 million blocks. Oh well, yeah, really, how do you know it's gonna stop at 21 million? Well, maybe it's gonna to get to 21 million and then Satoshi's picture is gonna come up and laugh at you all. <laughs> Well, if Jamie knew what he was talking about, he'd know that Bitcoin's code is open source, meaning that anyone with the right skills can read the code and know exactly how the system will operate. As much as our AI-enhanced descendants might like to know who Satoshi is, when the final block is mined in 2140, no photo will appear. Now, to be fair to Jamie, he hasn't rejected everything associated with crypto. In fact, he has been vocal about his support for blockchain technology. And in fact, JP Morgan has been one of the major banks leading the charge in terms of blockchain adoption. But we'll get to that a little bit later. For now though, in order to fully appreciate just how far Wall Street has come, let's turn to another of crypto's most prominent naysayers. Larry Fink heads up BlackRock which many of you will know is the world's largest asset manager, with around $9 trillion under management. Back in 2017, also in an interview with CNBC, Larry famously called crypto a, and I quote, index of money laundering. And then, as recently as 2021, he claimed he was the Jamie Dimon camp of crypto skeptics. What a change a few years can make. In June of this year, BlackRock filed for a spot Bitcoin ETF with Coinbase, the largest crypto exchange in the US, listed as the custodian. To be fair to Larry, he has also praised crypto's underlying technology over the years, and the partnership with Coinbase goes back to 2021. So why was BlackRock working with Coinbase at the same time as Larry was calling himself a crypto skeptic? Well, it all comes down 
to client demands. As Larry has admitted several times over the years, his clients have been clamoring for crypto. We're hearing from clients around the world about the need for crypto. And if BlackRock can give clients exposure to BTC and earn a commission in the process, well then, why the hell not? We interrupt this program for an emergency crypto weather forecast. Get ready for a whirlwind of savings. We're seeing some high pressure sign up bonus systems forming in the Northeast, with some exchanges offering up to $40,000. In the South, we've seen some heavy discounts on hardware wallets, so watch out for those if you're going to be out and about. And then in central areas, there's a high chance of trading fee discounts, which should be settling in later on. So be on the lookout for up to 60% off there. Lush! For a more comprehensive forecast, just visit coinbureau.com slash deals or use the link down in the description. These deals are red hot, so make sure to take all the necessary precautions. Well, that's all for today's forecast. Now back to the schedule program. Okay, so we've talked about crypto skepticism in Wall Street and touched on the reasons behind BlackRock and other institutions now wanting to offer clients a BTC product. Now let's move to technology, specifically how banks have embraced crypto and blockchain. If you zoom out, you can detect a few trends. In the years preceding the last crypto bull market in 2021 to 2022, banks and other financial institutions studied experimented with, and invested in crypto in a big way. And news reports took notice. Countless headlines at the time talked about the growing adoption of crypto technology by the big banks. Clearly, Wall Street has seen a shift in sentiment. This is perhaps best exemplified by Thomas Montag's Bank of America's chief operating officer. As the New York Times revealed, and I quote, after spending years privately ridiculing Bitcoin, Thomas asked a friend of his for a tutorial on cryptocurrencies and spent hours listening to lectures, reading books, and meeting executives from cryptocurrency businesses. Naturally, different banking chiefs came around to the merits of crypto at different stages, but by 2021, it's safe to say that most had been orange-pilled. Realizing that crypto was here to stay, banks not only experimented with crypto, but also lobbied regulators to create rules that would work in the bank's favor. Remember, just a few years earlier, some of them had lobbied to shut crypto down. So why the change in attitude? Well, for one, there was realization that for the time being at least, crypto needs banking, and that banks wouldn't be facing an existential crisis anytime soon. To this day, banks are the main way for people to on and off ramp crypto. People typically transfer money from their bank to an exchange and buy crypto that way. And then the reverse when they sell. The banks are happy to provide this for a fee, of course. The crypto companies also use banks for normal business operations like payroll and so on. And the banks realize that the industry becomes more regulated these partnerships between traditional banks and the crypto industry will inevitably increase. Next, there is the fact that there is demand for crypto, and this demand isn't going away. So rather than cracking down on crypto, why not offer the client's exposure to it instead? Again, for a fee. It is, as they say, a no-brainer. Third, there is the incredible power of blockchain and its ability to facilitate verifiable transactions at speed, and much more besides. Incorporating this tech in the financial system just makes sense. And so, unsurprisingly, banks have actually been pumping huge money into crypto companies to help advance this technology. In fact, a report by Blockdata notes that in May 2022, 61 of the top 100 banks had invested in crypto and blockchain's ecosystems. Unfortunately, we couldn't find more recent figures, but you can be pretty sure that there has been an increase. Of these, five banks in particular stand out. Morgan Stanley invested a whopping $1.1 billion into the crypto ecosystem between August 2021 and May 2022. Goldman Sachs and BNY Mellon pumped nearly $700 million each over the same time period, 
while the Commonwealth Bank of Australia and Citigroup poured a few hundred million each. Now, remember, of course, this was during the last bull market when everything seemed rosy and Sam Bankman Fried was just an eccentric with a big heart. I wanted to get rich not because I like money, but because I wanted to give that money to charity. In 2022, the situation changed dramatically. The collapse of FTX, Celsius, and Terra, as well as the revelations of massive fraud, were, to put it mildly, catastrophic for crypto's image. Regulators cracked down on crypto in a big way, particularly in the US, and it caused US banks to sharply reduce their exposure to crypto. To make matters worse for the industry, in March of this year, three of the most crypto friendly banks in the world either collapsed or were compelled to wind down their operations. Silvergate, Silicon Valley Bank, and Signature Bank were all forced to cease operations. Now, I should note that the reasons for their collapse are varied, but the downturn in the crypto market and their high exposure to the sectors were big factors. So, what's happened since then? Well, there's been a liquidity crunch in crypto, and firms have turned to smaller regional banks and international banks to fill the gap, according to Bloomberg. Customers Bangkok Inc., based in Pennsylvania, is one notable lender, but Swiss and Asian banks are also playing a bigger role. Just as regulation on crypto has pushed business away from the states, regulators and the fallout of the bear market are pushing companies to seek liquidity abroad. To get a sense of this, let's turn to this excellent overview of crypto-friendly banks this year from CoinClub. In case you're wondering, and I quote, a crypto-friendly bank is one that lets customers make large transfers to any exchange they want without asking them any inconvenient questions. The really crypto-friendly banks will allow customers to purchase crypto on credit. As you can see from their report, Europe is the region with the highest number of crypto-friendly banks, followed by Asia and then North America. Europe is, as the report notes, quote, currently the world's largest cryptocurrency economy, with governments scrambling to align regulation with increasing demand. This is only going to be helped when MICA, the comprehensive regulation framework for the crypto industry in the EU, comes into full force in December 2024. Now, I should note the UK also implemented legislation that gives clarity on crypto in August of this year. In Asia, meanwhile, you have Japan topping the list with the most crypto-friendly banks. Three banks are working on an Ethereum-based stablecoin, while Japan's second largest bank, Sumitomo Mitsui Trust, partnered with Tokyo-based exchange Bitbank to offer crypto custody services to institutional clients. Now, unsurprisingly, the crypto-friendly Singapore is also high on that list. However, a challenge local banks are facing there is the obligation from regulators to hold $125 of capital against any exposure of $100 to a crypto asset deemed high risk, like BTC or ETH. In North America, the US dominates the list with 20 crypto-friendly banks and just three in Canada. The report clearly indicates how regulators are making the situation increasingly challenging for those banks. Noting that, and I quote, in January, the Fed, Federal Deposit Insurance Corp, and the Office of Comptroller of Currency all warned banks to keep away from crypto, which was the start of Operation Chokepoint 2.0. In case you're unfamiliar, Operation Chokepoint 2.0 is the allegedly coordinated efforts by the Biden administration to restrict the cryptocurrency industry's access to the US banking sector. Even though the government denies such a plan exists, crypto companies are undoubtedly in the crosshairs of regulators. And some banks are spooked. As the report notes, a number of banks didn't want to take the risk and bowed out of the sector. New York's Metropolitan Commercial Bank, First Republic, and Citigroup are three notable institutions that actively avoid or shut down accounts evolved in crypto. But while some banks are bowing out, others are stepping up their involvement in crypto. Take HSBC, for instance. In November, the Hong Kong-based bank, one of the largest in the world, 
announced its plans to offer custody services for tokenized securities. Using tech created by Swiss crypto company firm Metico, HSBC will soon allow its institutional clients to securely store bonds and other securities in tokenized forms on the blockchain. And this is on top of its existing service for tokenized physical gold. But HSBC is not alone. Banks across the world are exploring the tokenization of real-world assets on the blockchain, including private ledgers and permission versions of networks like Ethereum. This trend is gaining traction globally, with regulatory bodies in Singapore, Japan, the UK and Switzerland beginning to test tokenization for various financial products. In fact, as Coindesk noted, tokenization was one of the buzzwords at the Cybos conference in Toronto in September, the global banking industry's annual technology convention. Now, around that time, Citi announced a tokenization service for cash management and trade finance for institutional clients. The service uses blockchain technology and smart contracts. Meanwhile, Deutsche Bank has begun working with Taurus, an institutional custody firm on crypto custody and tokenization. Standard Chartered, BNY Mellon, and others are also getting in on the action. And this is just the latest push by banks getting into crypto. While Jamie Dimon has publicly scorned cryptocurrencies, JP Morgan itself has been leading the charge in terms of adopting affiliated technologies. In 2019, it launched its own digital currency, JPM Coin. It's a stablecoin pegged one to one to the US dollar and is designed to help transfer funds between some of JP Morgan's clients. Last year, the bank got approval for a new crypto wallet trademark, JP Morgan Wallet, which is designed to address the challenges of cross-border payments. And in October of this year, the bank launched an in-house blockchain-based tokenization application. So what does this all mean? Well, for one, it's clear that crypto and the technology that underwrites it is here to stay. Despite a regulatory crackdown on crypto in the US, major US banks are still investing heavily in the space, particularly when it comes to the tokenization of assets. While access to liquidity has been an issue for crypto firms, in light of the 2022 collapse of FTX and others, there's a plethora of crypto-friendly banks outside the US that can fill the gap. This growing institutionalization of crypto will not sit well with the purists who imagine a system where power and influence is removed from centralization control through decentralized networks. These voices will argue that crypto wasn't created to make the existing system run better. It was created to revolutionize the system and make it more equitable and more democratic. Others will argue that for crypto to become mainstream, it needs the endorsement of the big institutions. They'll argue that this is the only realistic position if we're to onboard the next billion users and beyond. And then there are those who don't really care about the philosophy of crypto. Who cares? They just want the price to go up and are eager to see growing institutional adoption as they believe it will be rocket fuel for their investments. So which camp do you fall into? What do you think about the growing adoption of crypto by large institutions? Is it a good thing? A bad thing? Is it inevitable? Let us know in the comments. Before you go, if you enjoyed the video and you learned something from it, please like it, share it, and make sure you to subscribe to both Coin Bureau and Coin Bureau Clips. Also head over to the Coin Bureau Deals page where you can find the best discount deals on the finest crypto merch there is. It helps support the channel and lets us continue to provide you with the best crypto and macro content out there. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you all again soon.